Um, I guess we'll just have to let the test of time come through and see how it's held up. Okay, I like that. I like that answer. That's good. Mm-hmm. Oh, but you didn't like my answer. <laughs> no, I just feel like I, I feel like you're taking it in a different way that I. No, just I, I think now that I hear, I, I guess I see it, but not really. <laughs> yeah. 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 James. Um. Um. I'm not really immersed in the world of like punk rock, like I guess like you guys are. Cause, um, I don't go to shows. So I don't know anything about that type of environment or anything, but um, well, with that being said, uh, <clears throat> like, how did the movie like make you feel, or, or what did you think about like not so much like the skinheads, but like them as a band and you know, like, <laughs> so I'm never going to a, a shady <laughs> band like an arena in like in Portland, Oregon. That's for sure. <clears throat> well, I feel like okay. Okay, I, I, let me re-answer the question. <laughs> I really want to answer this in a way that you will like it. I think you're trying to compare... Yeah, like Tim said, he, some of these other movies, like, people like will be like, oh, I'm, I'm going to not copy this, but, like, really take this in and, like, incorporate it in my style. Like, this is a movie that would be hard to incorporate in, like, my style or like in my everyday life because it's it's a thriller with like a, a like back uh, with punk like undertones in it not mm-hmm. like a movie about some guy realizing who he is um through these like through what his advent not adventures but through his like whole journey kind of like a clockwork oranges where he like shitty stuff has to happen to him before he realizes that the shitty things he did like we're, we're going to c- catch up to him. Mm-hmm. So, does that answer? Like, it's not, I just don't <laughs> nope, think it's on the answer. same. Wrong yeah, he's like, try again. No, I just don't think it's on the same <laughs> level as those. And not like that it's, like, that it's not as good or anything like just that. Different. I just think it's hard to compare them. Okay. Where it, it might be easier to compare, like, Clockwork Orange with uh, Salt Lake City Punk um, it's just, I think that's the issue that I, I'm having trouble answering your questions. H- hard to compare both. Okay. I can stand by that. Oh, I like finally! That <laughs> <laughs> that's very nice. I did it! <laughs> no, but James, continue. I'm sorry. Um, no, you were going to say something different about the question or something? Yeah, were you going to answer that question? Which, wow. Well, no, I don't know. I've, I've not, I haven't seen the movie you just talked about right now, Annie. Um, uh, the, uh, the movies you mentioned I've only seen in American History X and uh, Clockwork Orange oh okay but that was like um, on VHS when I was like 10 years old or something <laughs> well see you still saw it yeah You're punk. I don't remember the end of it or not. <laughs> I don't remember the end of it but um, but like people dress up like those guys oh, oh yeah. yeah okay All I had white. a bowler hat too I had a bowler hat <laughs> wow okay I mean I've seen people do it in like like Halloween and stuff mm-hmm. but I've never seen like. oh it's like become like a culture yeah. really yeah like they just dress up like for like, no reason, uh, or just like no, for it's concerts just, like, and stuff. Incorporated in yeah. their like in their. It's style. really hard to explain. Yeah, I can't explain that either. I'm, I had a bowler hat and I only had a bowler hat because of stock or orange. So I, it it is hard to explain. Like what? it's because it's like uh. So punk rock for me, I feel like it's just, it's like being yourself and not giving a shit about what anybody thinks, mm-hmm. and that's what that movie, uh, the ultimate message is: is just like don't you know, don't let anybody try to change who you are on the in, you know who you are on the inside, mm-hmm. pretty much. And I feel like that's that is punk rock, um, like the message be well at least po- you know positive punk rock or whatever that is. Yeah. Well, at the end of a clockwork orange, he realizes he's still a shitty person. Oh, okay. So I don't remember the ending. And it is like, be who you are, because if you're shitty, just be shitty. If you're, you know, whatever you want to be, just because they try yeah. to, well, they try to brainwash. I remember that. I, that's like the main part. I remember when he's in the room with his eyes wide open, and and ultimately it doesn't work because uh-huh. the, he turned, he, he he reverts back to what he knows. Okay. And because that's he's. 
danger to them. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's uh, yeah. I, that's my theory on why it's so in uh, intertwined. But I, I don't know why. I can't really explain how that became. Like people want to dress like that. And yeah. Then, like, but like you're saying, like people wear like the white suits and, oh, yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I've never, I've never seen never. people wear like the cup or. Yeah, I was gonna say that. I've never seen that. Or the eye, unless it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but I, I, it is very. Well, you got the addicts that dress all like droogs, and then you got lower maybe class not, brats not much, that yeah. like use the the imagery. Yeah, stuff too. maybe not so much anymore the addicts, but a lot of their like artwork and yeah, and when they first like started uh a lot of them look like that yeah clockwork uh i'm sorry a lower class brats still looks a little bit like that i mean the singer wears like bowler hats and he has like a leather jacket they're a little so. bit more glam now yeah at yeah. least in their style yeah, yeah so. uh, but i mean their lyrics and stuff and they they like i remember like a long years ago their like whole website was done in that fucking language because the clockwork orange was a book mm-hmm. whatever and it was it was kind of written like the way that alex talks and stuff it's very like weird. that cockney yeah. uh like there's like a, a word for it i forget yeah but. it's it's like a it's a blend Eggy of like, like yeah it's a it's a blend of like cockney and something else but yeah it's kind of like hard to decode if you don't like know anything about it like well it's like train spotting you, yeah. you have to watch it a few times to really grasp what they're actually <clears throat> yeah. you know talking about just cause that culture shock that we're not used to necessarily yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah yeah people do uh, go out and do that too okay uh, yeah <laughs> it's a good look so you're like would I compare those like would I put that in the same genre or same oh uh, my question yeah um I just mean, like, do you think that it's, like, a cl- like a classic like that? You know, I'm not saying... I'm not trying to compare it uh, to the films, because they're obviously, like, on, on different ends of the spectrum. Yeah. I understand that. But I'm saying, like, uh, when you think of, you know, all these films, I feel like they're grouped into one, even though they're all so different. And, and uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is, for me, yes, I thought it was, like, an instant classic for that world and you don't get them very often at all like there's not very many punk movies that you can really you know Relate say to. probably the ones that I've just said and that's it and that's kind of sad mm-hmm. so seeing something contemporary or a filmmaker who is willing to do that is a beautiful thing or whatever yeah willing to do that and not make it look cheesy yes because mm-hmm. that, that's my fear all the time that like oh great you have this like like punk rock girl on in your TV show, but like, what does she like? What does she act like? You know, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. and this is very true to the attitude. Not like just like, oh, they're wearing a, a t-shirt, like a minor threat t-shirt or a Doug Kennedy's t-shirt. Like, I could give two shits about that, but they're like actual they woke up situations. In a van, crashed yeah. in the cornfield. <laughs> yeah. yeah. like, like they're actual situations. Like they're stealing gasoline. They have like what one or two cell phones. Like. They're in this, and that's the attitude. It was spot on. That and and I guess that that would answer your question. Right yeah, there. yeah. The attitude. <laughs> Her fourth. Her fourth, fourth answer it. to the no, question. That was my fifth answer. <laughs> Trying to find a way That's okay. to please Wesley. Wesley. Right. <laughs> Man, um, hard question was Wesley. Come on, that was a hard question. Um. Did you you didn't answer yet? Or you he still did. Think he did. He did. Yeah, they said I did, so I, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I did. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's hard for me to compare um or put them in the same thing because I haven't seen those movies that you've said and Or maybe just uh well I'll give you homework and say to revisit yeah. them. Uh if you want with me or alone, whatever you want. I have most of them, so okay. pass them on. Um I have one a bonus question for you, Bob. That's it. This that, is the one I know. You gotta get it right this yeah. time. <laughs> what is your favorite desert band? I knew you heard it. Oh, what's, what's your desert? Like, yeah, what's your that. desert band? <laughs> I I was waiting for you. <laughs> and mine is so easy. It's so 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 easy. It's definitely gotta be the Clash, London Calling. Well, you, like, you can get their whole catalog. You just yeah, you don't have to say one, one record. Oh, okay. Be- even better. Oh, wow. Okay, 
that's awesome. Yeah. Good <laughs> Wow. And that's like not me lying. That's not me get like when they're uh, they think they're gonna die, they change it and they're like, oh, Prince and Madonna. I mean, I love Prince and Madonna. Like, don't get me wrong, but <laughs> I would not change that Desert Island Dust. I don't know. My favorite band of all time is Operation Ivy, oh, but sure. they only have one record, so I'd be stuck with on one <laughs> record. So I'd probably go with like. The Beatles or something. They have an mm-hmm. extensive catalog, yeah. and they've got a wide variety of music. I, I would always have have a different variety, but yeah, I'll go with Beatles. Why not? Um, I go with Kansas. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's a going out on the. I you didn't, didn't expect that from me. No, <laughs> no, no. Well, I've heard you listening to. Uh, to classic rock at yeah. work or whatever so no that's not too yeah. just that band okay which is funny um did you know that they were at comic con were you there for that no I didn't know they were on Sunday they did a surprise uh for Supernatural they came out and they played that fucking one of their um, uh, their fam- the famous carry song. on yeah, yeah. they played they that and I watched them do their sound check for it and I was like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> They played in El Centro at the at the fair out there. Oh, no. yeah, that makes sense. Um, what you oh, what oh you? yeah, we are, you all right? Uh, I would say Talking Heads. There you go. That's cool. <laughs> uh, any? Do you guys have anything to to say? Mm-hmm. You know, I have a bonus. Um, <laughs> I forgot, but I had uh, I had uh, a couple weeks ago. I went to watch Reservoir Dogs mm-hmm. on 35 millimeter in LA for my birthday, and my buddy Chris went to see uh, Jackie Brown on Saturday. While, when we were in um, uh, was San Bernardino, and it's mm-hmm. not Dead Fest, so he was there. And fucking Tarantino showed up to his screening, uh, and Tarantino was at my yeah. screening too. But I actually got some. Uh, I recorded some audio to play on the show and I keep forgetting to put it on <laughs> every what was it been two episodes um, yeah. I think since then so um, do you guys want to hear it? yeah totally. let's do it. yeah okay cool uh, basically to give you a little backdrop on what it is um, he's just talking about how he's he's not actually from LA but he came over here when he was two and how Reservoir Dogs is based in LA and mm-hmm. I won't say any more because then you'll know everything he's about to say so anyway uh, yeah here's um, his little speech before Reservoir Dogs enjoy I'm LA boy I'm from here I mean I was born in Tennessee but I moved here in like a two so give me a fucking break up in Los Angeles County. I went to movie theaters all over LA County and the surrounding counties. Uh, I went to movies on Broadway itself back in the Orpheum days. The Metropolitan Theaters were actually, you know, you could see all the big movies, you just had to watch them with Spanish subtitles. But you know, but you could, they had all the big movies. Uh, uh, There was actually one time at the Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Theater, they had a triple feature in 81 of Escape from New York, Wolfen, and Brian De Palma's Blowout. That's the Blowout, Blowout, Blowout. Escape from New York, Wolfen, and Blowout. Oh my God, what a great triple feature. Anyway, this is, we've done a few, the, this is like our 25th anniversary of Reservoir Dogs, so we've done a few of them. We did one at Sundance, and we did one in New York. But this is my first official Reservoir Dogs big deal anniversary thing in Los Angeles. And the movie is a Los Angeles movie. There are New York crime films and there's other kind of crime films, but this is a Los Angeles crime film. And, you know, the, the movies that you know, that fall into the lineage of this film before this film are films like Lula Grossbart's uh, Straight Time, Michael Mann's Thief. These are movies that 
took place in Los Angeles, crime movies that take place in Los Angeles, and I'm proud to have Reservoir Dogs be amongst those LA crime movies. So, yeah. shout out to Los Angeles.